know what it is. Maybe be a socks in the building. This is Startup Storefront. Between all the Mexican restaurants, food trucks, and street vendors, Los Angeles is the place to be when it comes to getting authentic, mouth-watering tacos. Thus, winning the award for the best tacos in LA is quite the feat. Villas Tacos did the unthinkable. They were crowned as the best tacos in LA two years in a row. These back-to-back -back champions serve their tacos on handmade blue corn tortillas with guac that never costs extra and a drizzle of their family salsa. These will blow your mind. This week on the podcast, we're speaking with Victor Villa, the founder of Villas Tacos, and how he got to start throwing house parties in high school, why he wants Villas Tacos to be the in and out of taco franchises, and how life is easy, but people make it harder than it has to be. And on that note... Hey, you know what it is, baby? It's not gonna kill All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, Vic, legend, two-time champ from Villas Tacos. Yes, sir. Villas Tacos in the building. Tell us a little bit about... Uh, how you got started, man? It all started off as an idea. I have a lot of ideas, and this one was an attainable idea. So I've always worked in restaurants and stuff like that, and I've always been an entrepreneur since I was like 13. But it even goes back to when I was like nine, pulling weeds for the the senior citizen ladies that yeah. lived across the street, yeah. get paid five dollars and a, and a can of Coca Cola for pulling your weeds out there in 102 degree weather yeah. for like two hours. But that showed me that you got to work for, for you what you hustle. want, and you can hustle for sure. But uh, Villas Tacos just started off as an idea. I wanted to own some taquerias, some taco stands. And I have a bunch of like business ideas on my chalk wall in my apartment. Okay. And uh, I was tired of working for someone else. So I looked at the at the wall and I said, let's get to it, you know? And then I decided I had a couple, couple thousand dollars. I didn't really have much, but I had enough to buy a grill, a canopy, a couple tables, uh, the first round of meat, some, some vegetables and you know, I got to work. Where was your first setup? The first setup was in the front yard of my grandma's house in Highland Park on Avenue 50 and Lincoln. Uh, that was November 2nd, 2018. And then I quit my job probably two weeks after that. What were you doing? What was your job? Uh, I was working at a, a fine dining restaurant right there in downtown LA. Okay. I took the leap of faith. I was getting paid really well, yeah. but I wanted more for myself. You know, I had my own business, something to pass down to my kids or to, to my daughter at the time. Did you have a daughter at the time? I had one. How old was she then? She was one. Did having her change your whole view of this? Sort of. I say sort of because it's yes and no. No, because I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always wanted to own my business, own businesses. But yes, because when she was born, I needed to do it at that time. Like you I had needed, the urgency yeah, there all exactly. of a sudden. Yeah. So I quit my job, took the leap of faith, started Villas Tacos. And, you know, the first year it was, it was challenging. Just like, you know, opening any business, the first year it could be a challenge. Or it yeah. usually is. You know, they say like restaurants and are the number one failing business. And I see why. But I'm glad I started the way I did, which was like on the street um, as a pop-up because that first year it was it was challenging. But um, you know, I slowly but surely started getting traction, gaining customers and uh, building my brand. Yeah. So now we're, we're about three years in and you know, we're getting ready to open up our first restaurant. And you know, if you look at our Instagram, you see the lines of, of people that we have coming coming to dine with us. Yeah, it's incredible. So, so just Saturday, we had a line of like 100 people. Yesterday on a Tuesday, we had a line of like 50 people. So we keep on going. So you start in a front yard. How do you get the word out? Like, I'm assuming your neighborhood shows up just because you're, you're familiar with them. But like, yeah. beyond that, are you relying on word of mouth? Are you pushing the socials pretty hard? Like, what's your strategy there? So, I mean, I, I started this, the Instagram on the first day. But like I said, I've always been an entrepreneur. Before I started selling tacos, I was throwing parties. So I threw my first party at the age of 13 in my grandma's house in Atwater Village. So that was for my 13th birthday. I was a uh, ninth grade, I think. You charge a cover? What kind I of did, party was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> um, so I told I told my parents like, oh, they asked me, what do you want for your birthday? I said, no, I don't want much. Just maybe pay for a DJ. At the time, like Kiss FM, you know how they would do like uh, gas giveaways. Sure. So there was a, a DJ that I met at one of those gas giveaways. His name was DJ Tremendous. I met him when I was like 11. I told him, my sister just having a quinceanera in about a year. Would love for you to come DJ. He DJ at my sister's quinceanera. And then that's how we build the relationship. So I told him, all I want is DJ Tremendous. Shout out DJ Tremendous, wherever you are. Right on. Um, we'll tag him. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even know where <laughs> what his Instagram is. But yeah, they, they said, okay, we'll do that for you. And I said, okay, say less. So then I went to Kinko's. My buddy DJ C, he made the flyer. And then I went to Kinko's. I printed one flyer on a cardstock, but like 16 of them. So I cut them by hand. And then I went everywhere and I passed them out. 
So I went to, you know, the Eagle Rock area, Highland Park area, everywhere. And I just passed out flyers. And then girls were two, uh, $1 and guys were $2, <laughs> right? Which is nothing. But this is like 16 years ago. Right. Did you have drinks? Or did you, you not? know what? Because you were 13. Yeah, I was 13. I was 13. Birthday party. I'm just but you like, know, what there's, kind of, well, there's a yeah, way. Yeah. I didn't personally have the drinks, but right. you know, there's a bunch of but drinks. I didn't sell any at the okay. time. But sure enough, somehow at the end of the night, I ended up pretty wasted. And did you I, put on the card that this is a 13 year old's birthday party? No, I just called it Victor's Birthday yeah. Bash Part 1. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Victor's what was the, Birthday Bash. What was bash. the age range of people that showed sure, up? I'd say probably anywhere from like 13 to like 22. What'd your family say? I mean, or did they, they know? Were they like, ah, oh, this is what he does? Well, It'll at the time, fun. they didn't know that that's what I did because I didn't even know that's what I did. Right? Yeah. Right? That was my first one. Yeah. Right. But it was it was such a success that that's I knew amazing. I had something going on. At the end of the night, I had like five hundred dollars in my pocket. That's awesome. As a thirteen year old kid. That's a good story. So I story, continued man. it. I you know I I joined forces with some of my buddies who were also throwing parties, and then we took over the party scene in in the Northeast area, and pretty much every week for like. I don't know, six six years we would throw parties. So growing up at, at like, let's say when I was 16, we threw a warehouse party. I invested like $3,000 at the age of 16. I left with $6,000. That's awesome. And one, and one night I made yeah. $3,000 as a 16-year-old as a That's a lot kid. of money for a 16-year-old. It, is. Yeah. it yeah. really is. I knew that wouldn't last forever, at, at least that style. Where did I, you get that from? Did you, did you learn that? The hustle? Yeah. Did you see that? Did you have someone in your family? When I was a kid, probably like, 11 years old, I'd go to downtown LA and I'd be like, Oye, Oye, Dania, cuánto para esta camisa o algo? Right, how much for the shirt? She'll say, 15. I'll say, Ah, oh, solo tengo 10. Yeah. Right, she I yeah. only have 10 bucks. Right. And then it was my strategy. And I'd be like, Oh, perdón, niño, no, no lo puedo vender. So then I'd pretend to walk away slowly or I would walk away slowly. She'd be like, Okay, okay, bam, bam, bam. So it's, it's kind of the hustle, you know, the hustle has always been there. Um, so I, um, yeah, I threw parties for a long time, a lot, of, long time in my life. So that's why, in in my area, I was kind of known as that guy who threw parties. So once that guy who threw parties started selling tacos, they're like, oh, now he sells tacos, I guess. But um, you know, a lot of that's people awesome. they would probably be embarrassed. But I've never you really think so. Been, yeah, yeah, maybe. You know, a lot of people. I think I think people care too much about what other people think about them. Yeah, I but think me, that's I, true. I really don't give a fuck about what anybody thinks about me. You know, because. I'm I'm always gonna be goofy. I'm always gonna be funny, but I'm always gonna be about my business, and um, you know I'm always gonna try to make something out of nothing. You know, make a dollar out of fifteen cents. So what I love about you, and I think the thing I connected with, and I think the thing that people should really pay attention to, is if you haven't followed VS Tacos, do that because there's so many entrepreneurs who aren't unapologetically them, and it's it like bothers me. And they'll be at any level of success. So they'll they'll have they'll be at zero or they'll have raised like four hundred million dollars. It doesn't matter what they are, what where they are. It's just like it's this thing where they feel weird to just lean into who they are. And with you, it's like people get it. Like you're as authentic as it gets, right? You're on your Instagram, people know it, you're hype, you're building the engine, your commitment to the brand is there. And it resonates. At some point people go, Oh, this motherfucker's crazy. But like, let's get on board. He if he's excited, maybe there's something I should be excited about too. And that, that honesty is huge. Like, to me, it's it's everything. That level of commitment is fucking everything. You know, I have to agree with you. It's like I put my own to my business, and I think people see that, and people people love it. You know, it's like it's not only our food. Our food's amazing. I think if, if I wasn't the leader of this company, I think Villas Tacos would still be successful. Because of the product itself, you the mean? The product itself is yeah. just, it's the best. That's why, you know, we won Best Tacos in LA two years in a row. Like, it's the real deal. There's... You know, I, I go to other places and I go to my competition and I take a bite of their food. And part of me wants to be like, damn, this taco is even better than mine. But, you know, I still haven't found that one. So and it's not only like in the L.A. area. It's like if I go to Mexico or if I go over here, it's like I just think our quality is unmatched from our meat to like the, the salsas to our own style of of our own taco. You know, if you look at our taco. You know it's a Villas taco. I call it a hood pattern because uh, I try to get a pattern on it, but it didn't really work in my favor. So I just call it a hood pattern because everyone that's knows funny. what what our food is. You know that that's our taco. How big is your team today? How many how many like how many locations will you do in a weekend? So you know crews? sometimes we have done two, but I'm just focusing on one for now. Okay. Because I'm trying to build the restaurant. Yeah. I don't want the quality to go down anywhere. Yeah. Let's talk about that. So. You figure out the game of like making tacos, setting up shop, having a team. Now you're managing, delegating, you're making money, you're seeing how it's going. 
And now you want to flip it to literally buying a building or owning your own place, getting a lease. Mm -hmm. And so what has that journey been like for you as you're in it right now? Because well, it's like it's, almost like a new sport, you're, right? It's a yeah, different game. It is a different game, but it's like one that we've kind of, we've kind of been playing it. Like I said, we've had this like apartment thing, right? The bodega. I kind of look at it as a restaurant without the benefits of a restaurant. Like the cost, it's it's there. But I think the main challenge I find myself in right now is the area that I want my restaurant in, there's no restaurants available. So there's like raw space. And the biggest challenge is the capital, right? Like in order to, to make a space that's not a restaurant, doesn't have like grease trap or none of that, you're literally gonna have to build it out yeah. and somehow. It takes like anywhere from like six to nine months, depending who you choose. I think that's the biggest one because there is a bunch of other restaurants like over here or over here or over here, but that's not what I want. You know, I know exactly what I want and I know where I want it. So I'm still, I'm working with my realtor right now to try to figure that out. Yeah. What does it look like in your head? What does the restaurant look like? Is it, is it to go? Is it sit down? It's, it's to go. Is it cocktails? Okay, yeah, it's, it's to, go. to go. It's not, it's not like a sit down restaurant. We come take your order. That's not what I want. Got for it. The, at least for the first one. Maybe we'll get there down the line. Yeah. But I just want to, you know, kind of get people in and get people out. Kind of how we're doing it right now. And the hard part for you is to build out that kitchen is like 800,000 to a million dollars, depending on all the stuff you no, want to No, I'll say, I'll say like 150 to 2. 150,000? Yeah, to 2. It's not that big, that's why. You sure? Oh, interesting. Yeah. You sure? I don't yeah, know. Not right. 800. <laughs> I, think, I, I, mean, I think just hiring the architect and getting that, that's the problem. So you got to hire an architect. You got to go through city approvals. Yeah, yeah, I've been I've been talking to different That's going to take people. you six months, just that. Six, yeah, the, the rent for six months. But I mean, maybe they'll... They'll help, help you out. Give, I mean, yeah. the landlord should give you a, some sort of allowance. You sign like a 10-year lease. Yeah. yeah. Great. Is that what you're looking to do? Yeah. yeah. You sign a 10-year lease, you know? Yeah. It makes sense to do that. If I'm going to invest this much money into the building and, yeah, totally. and making it home, then I want it to be home for a while. So, so how do you approach that? Let's just pretend that that number is 250000 Let's just pretend. Yeah. So then you want to go raise capital. So let's predict the future. So in yeah, the future, okay, okay. you have a signed lease. Okay. You're doing it. So yeah, the yeah, only yeah. path to doing it is if there's nothing that's a restaurant, you have to sign a lease, cool, and you have to build it, cool. And then you have to learn a new game, which is like raising, you know, raising pretty good amount of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on that? How do you go about Shoot. doing that? So right now, I'm, I mean, we probably have like half of that. Sure. So it's like finding the other half. Yeah. Finding that first half was a mission. Right. But we got it done. So, I mean, yeah, we'll get that other, that other half done too. I guess the way I'll do it is probably like raise money sell a lot of like merchandise merchandise has helped and we do a really good job of doing that and you know what i might do too like open up another pop-up so i have like two streams of income coming in that way we could you know generate more capital yeah. and uh and use that like towards investments i don't want to sell my company that's what you know what i mean a lot of people like yeah. just this year probably like 10 15 investors have reached out to us what do they want to do they want to buy your, your well, brand they want to they invest they want to own a piece of Villas Tacos, but that's what I say. I say, like, Villas Tacos is not for sale. At mm -hmm. least this business isn't. You know, I have a couple other ideas that I think are just going to be as successful as Villas Tacos. And that, you know, we can start from the, we can start together. And yeah. if you want to invest, and maybe I can sell you a piece of my, a piece of the pie from that one. So you want to own it all forever. I want to own it all forever. I mean, you can do a lot of things. I mean, you can do, like, Kickstarter, right, which is basically yeah. free. You'd crush that. WeFunder, yeah. you'd crush that. Because a lot of that is just like you being Google, present. Google, right? What's that? Yeah, Indiegogo. Indiegogo. Yeah, yeah Indiegogo. Kickstarter. Yep. You can do a campaign I know, like I, that. To a one bunch of people, like, my DMs are so crazy, like, all the time, pretty much. I mean, I never stop. I never stop. But that's another thing. Like, people are like, oh, you need to find a social media manager or you need to do this. But, like, I think that's really been part of our success formula. That's what you do. Is, yeah, that's yeah. what I do. Like, I, yeah. could, I could delegate, you know, some of the other stuff I do, like carrying 10, 15 boxes, on the second floor to like my prep lady or whatever right. but like the real building relationships yeah i do that and yeah, like people that's connect with you. and I, yeah they do they, they really do like knowing that it's me on the other side or whatever yeah during the pandemic you know we switched from like street pop-up street vendor and we went back we went back to our roots and instead of popping up in the front yard of my grandma's house we popped up in the back but we didn't pop up for the public it was only pre-orders i don't know if you know about that so it was only pre-orders. Uh, Tuesday at noon, we would uh, take orders for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. How would you take them on Instagram or what? On Instagram. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So uh, I called it the VS Tacos. So you had like system. drops. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was like a supreme <laughs> job, bro. That's awesome. Yeah. Like one time we we sold out in thirty seconds Jeez. for the weekend, like two hundred orders in thirty seconds, and then for like two months straight we sold out in one minute. But that's how like I feel. Even though a lot of people probably couldn't get in and they felt some sort of way, for those two hundred people, I made sure to like knock it out of the fucking park, dude. Right. So as soon as they would send their order, I would send them the confirmation pickup time. So there's a five minute window. From three to nine, it was five minutes. You got five minutes, and pretty much people were on time every single time. And that's what I think, though. I, I, I knew this. I knew that people were stuck inside their homes. Bars were closed. Theme parks were closed. There pretty much wasn't anything to do besides go to work or work from home or you know, go to the store and back. So people still wanted to, like, have fun and feel a sense of connection to community, to company, to a business. I don't know. So I took that as, like, my chance. So as soon as they would send their order, I would send them a confirmation and then they would send their payment confirmation. And then I would send them like a thank you message. Like, thank you so much for your support. We look forward to serving you soon. Boom. They would come, they would pick up their order and then I'll still go, I'll still go out of my way and text them like, we hope you enjoyed everything. Thank you so much for, for dining with us. Thank you for allowing us to serve you. Welcome to the team is what I would say if it was their first time. And dude, there were some people that would order every single week because it was like an adrenaline rush, I think. They would pull up to the corner yeah. in their car on the pickup designated pickup zone, and then we would run, literally run the food to their car, give it to them in there, thank you so much, and then run back, and then run, boom, boom, boom. It was a system, dude. Like, I mean, you're going several steps above yeah. the average delivery app. You know, when I order something on one of those, I'm not getting a personalized message from the shop owner. Yeah. I'm not getting a thank you or a follow up or anything like that. You really are establishing a connection yeah. to your clientele. Definitely. And I mean, now that like we don't do that system, like let's say on Saturday when we had a line of 100 people, I went and go thank everybody personally. Like, give me some, give me some, give me some. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. So I know that like building relationships, building that that brand identity, building that sense of connection, that's that's what really like makes a, a company, I think, more successful than they would normally be. Do you view that as the hard part as you scale? And so as you go from like one location to maybe five, right? So let's pretend you get this Highland Park. We're in the future now, mm -hmm. 2025. You got five, 10, 20, 30 locations. Yeah. It's challenging, right? It to to kind of keep, like you can't be everywhere. I mean, you kind of can. I think yeah. social media allows that where yeah, it's like your presence is still felt. But So I think, like let's say when we're popping up at Benny Boy in Highland Park, like people would go to Benny Boy and I'm like, oh, I thought you were gonna be there. Like, I want, I really want. Like to you see. personally, or like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. that's funny. Okay. Like, oh, like, or they would, they would hit me up on on the DMs. Like, where are you gonna be at? Okay. But I think, you know, with Instagram and like with social media, yeah. I'll still be like, there, you know, because I'm not afraid to like record myself or yeah. or post a funny video or a thank you message to everybody. Like, I, I've done a bunch of those on my Instagram. Like, you know, we had a crazy weekend. Thank you guys for sh showing up. Uh, we're back this Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we we look forward to serving you. Or when we're coming out with the new shirt. And by the way, like we're gonna be releasing this on Tuesday. So I think you know, as as we grow, I I would still probably be doing the the social media. Yeah. And uh, still doing videos. You know. Yeah. Don't change That's what smart. um what what's already working. When you win or, the LA Taco competition, do you win anything, or do you see this massive you spike? Trophy. You won a trophy. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw that <laughs> yeah. you guys through. Sometimes I think bragging rights is worth more than money. Do you see like a spike in either Instagram follows or interactions or mm, all of a sudden? I would say yes and no. Because um, even before like the competition, you know, we were growing and yeah. we had a fat line. And after, I mean, we had a fat line too. So it's like, and even before the second, the second win, we had probably the longest line I've ever seen. And then after, I've, we've had the longest line I've ever seen. So it's like. Yes and no. I think our, our food is just like, it's a word of mouth. The way, I, the way I like to explain it, the way I tell people is like, you have a good experience somewhere, chances are you'll tell three to four people. You have a bad experience somewhere, you'll probably tell five, six people. You have a great experience somewhere, you'll probably tell like seven to eight people. Now, if you have an amazing experience somewhere, from the food to like the hospitality, chances are you won't stop talking about it. And I think that's what Villas Tacos is. It's like a great experience. We have music playing. The vibes are up, but then you, you try the food and you're like, okay, I know why they won. I know why, you know, they're the champions in LA. So 
our, our food is something special. Are oh, there any tacos you like besides your own? Like if you're, are there any other like companies that you're like, oh, yeah, they're all doing, really good. They're doing pretty good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all pretty good. All of them that I made that list. Yeah. I'd say not one is like a nasty taco. Although I probably had one that I would never go back. To. <laughs> Share it so that too. we don't make that mistake. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> do that. When Taco Madness comes, it's, I'm very competitive. Yeah. So I don't like to lose. That's business. Uh, business yeah. That's what business is. Yeah, yeah definitely. Business, business mean, is doggy all. dog. And, yeah. and I'm a fucking pit bull, baby. Yeah. You sink or swim. Do you ever like experiment with different things? Like, will you release a certain taco during a certain time or like a new? No, I have. During like Len, I, would, I did a shrimp taco okay. before. Oh, yeah. yeah. But not really. I keep my menu kind of chill. I just love the drop idea. Like the whole like, like when food. Yeah. There's a couple people that do it really well. Like Car- there's a Carla's Market. This guy he just pops up out of a little restaurant on Sunset, yeah. and he like similar concept to what you're talking about. There's 20. Once they go, that's it. But the sandwich is like the best shit ever. Yeah. Like it is like life changing. He does it only like Tuesday, Wednesday. Like it's literally something. It's not every day. It's never the weekend. It's like yeah. middle of the week. But the sandwiches are like, like you get your ordering quick type of thing, and then you pick it up. But it's it's. I just love the concept of like. Uh, I look at that as a create. It's creative. Yeah, you know, for someone to be doing something you see in fashion, in food, yeah. that's epic. And then I think about like collaborations too. It's like, can you collab with like a different meat provider, like a vegan, like daring food yeah, as an yeah, example? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Can you collab? And then now all of a sudden you're both like it's a, it's new territory. It's never happened before, yeah. right? And so now now all of a sudden it's like you can pop up at Benny Boy. That's a street level collab. Like that's a collab. Then you have like daring chicken for like a vegan taco. That's another collab. And everyone's just basically benefiting off of each other's following or yeah. whatever i just love that because it's new it's there's no, i've never at least in my lifetime i've never seen that happen before and then everyone promotes it they're all promoting each other yeah i plan on i plan on collabing with a couple of people you know first to me is like if i like you well i mean i like yeah. everybody you yeah. know but like your food and right yeah you know like company or whatever so i plan on doing a couple collabs soon i just haven't to be honest with you we've been so busy what does next year look like for you so Shoot, it's next summer year? next year is Highland Park open. Yeah, Highland Park's open like? for sure. I'm really like goal oriented. Totally. Right? Yeah. Tell me about what's, um, on, what's on your list. Yeah. What's on your chalkboard? Yeah. It's just getting, getting the restaurant open. This one restaurant open. So as soon as I start with that one, it's like, I'm ready for another one. Obviously there's going to be like new challenges and so, but I feel like I'm ready for them. I don't think anything's harder than like selling our type of food, like in the street. So let's say Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we're selling probably like a thousand tacos, maybe more. And just for that amount of meat, for that amount of masa, for that amount of cheese, that amount of everything, salsas, it's like, it's crazy going back and forth. When I say I don't think anything's harder is because, you know, when you have a restaurant, everything gets delivered there. You do the prep there, you do the cleaning there, you do the, every, everything's done there. So you just, you set up or everything's set up already. You don't have to set anything up. You just go maybe an hour before service, you get your stuff ready. You open the doors, and you close doors, you wa- you rinse down, wash the dishes. But like for, for a pop, it's so much more than that, dude. Coolers. I saw I saw your whole team set up. Oh my gosh, it's, like, that's it's crazy. Lot. That's a lot. We're bringing the heat, bro. We're bringing the noise. Like we're not there to sell out. You know, a lot of vendors there, they they don't mind selling out right there. They just bring like, I don't know, I'll say like the bare minimum. I'm so glad you said that because it yeah. pisses me off. Yeah. So as like, like literally. Like, oh, wow, we like, sold out in like three hours. I like, Thank you guys for coming. I'm like, you're dumb. Like, dude, I I'm like, you're dumb. I'm like, do you know how dumb you sound? Yeah. I'm like, do you know how dumb you sound? Like, I, I don't really believe in selling out if I have the, That's the capacity. literally the right ad. It literally, I can't yeah. tell you. Like at, we opened up Border X in the city of Bell. We had three food trucks confirmed, two canceled day of. Vicho shows up. I'm like, get a second truck now. They literally went through three trucks that whole day. I mean, they yeah. crushed. The fact that people canceled was shocking to me. Yeah. I'm like, it's a grand opening, right? Yeah. And then at Benny Boy, same thing. I'm like, Chelsea, tell everyone there to triple up Yeah. for like the I week. Knew. For the week. And then they had this barbecue yeah. place, which was, yeah. I mean, fire. Like, incredible. The food is incredible. They sold out. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, two like hours, I went right? to talk to him. Like, don't do that. He's like, I yeah. underestimated it. I'm like, why would you do that? I'm like, look at this. Look around. This is this is not. We're not messing around. No, like, the, I'm not messing around. Like, yeah. Chelsea, no one's messing around here. Uh, yeah. Like definitely. you should be ashamed of you. Like I was really like right. fucking yeah. pissed because it, it really bothers me. It also takes back from the experience. Right. Now you have customers and like, I don't think that's cool. Like I don't think selling out when yeah I can smell the food is cool. Selling yeah. out in fashion, cool. Selling out when I can smell the food and I can see the owner, 
I think it's, it's I think it's more it's more like dude you can make more money like why exactly. would you want to totally, pass yeah, you left it on the yeah. table for so nothing. for me like dude we're going through a bunch of meat like in one weekend we'll probably go through like 500 pounds yeah right that's crazy it's crazy it's it's ridiculous but so I'm saying like that's awesome. we bring the noise wherever we go so even on on like in front of a black party uh, right there Highland Park yeah we're bringing the noise that's why when we have 500 people when we're serving 500 people we have like six seven liters of guac it's it's crazy what we have yeah <laughs> yeah that's awesome so we're going through a lot and that's why it, it, yeah. it's a lot of work yeah i'm here to do it i'm here to do the hard stuff i'm here to do the stuff that no one wants to do i love it that way that way you know i'm eventually i'll reap the benefits that you will yeah yeah i'm You're not sharper. gonna stop i'm not i'm definitely stop. not gonna stop i don't stop i i keep on going bro i wake up early i go to see blade sometimes you know i don't even eat but i'll do it again the next day i love it you know someone calls off guess what i'm here baby if I need to get there two hours earlier, then I will. Yeah, that's but, it. Um, that's the game. Entrepreneurship made simple by Vic. Exactly, man. I'm it's hungry. Really you you want to eat, baby? You want to eat? Go and eat. Life's easy. <laughs> I think people just make it hard, right? Life's easy. You either do it or you it's don't. a fact. It's like sales. You just fucking do it. Yeah, you do it. You or you don't eat. I mean, you, I don't know. You, up, yeah. to you. up to you how bad you want it. Yeah, so that's, that's what we're doing right now. I appreciate um, you, Vic. Appreciate you, man. Tell yeah. everyone where they can find you, man. And you can find us at Highland Park. Where can't uh, you find him? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can find, you find us on Instagram Everywhere. at VS Tacos Los Angeles. It's probably the best way to to, to follow us. I put everything on Instagram. Uh, our hours of operation, where we'll be, but for the most part, we'll be in Highland Park for the near future until we get that that restaurant open. I think I'm gonna open up another spot. But like I said, as far as restaurants, uh, there's a bunch of buildings that I have in mind, yeah. but. I want to stick to the plan. Highland Park's got to come first. Highland Park's got to come first. I love the commitment. Because, yeah, it has to be like... You got to plant the flag. Plant yeah. the flag. Yeah. So I say Vias Tacos, I wanted to be like like the In-N-Out of Tacos. That's what I've said before. So I wanted to be like a private family-owned franchise. Right. Nice. Um, like Porto's. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So I plan on it. I'm like growing this big fucking tree. But I want the trunk of the tree to be based in Highland Park. And then, you know, the branch over here, branch over here, wherever you want to go. You want to go to Santa Monica, you want to do Venice, you want to do downtown. The base, the trunk has to be rooted in Highland Park. I love it. Smart. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, man, it was a pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. Hey, you. Yeah, you listening. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. If you just can't get enough, check out our subscription on Apple Podcasts. For only $4.99 a month, you can listen to the full-length, uncut, unedited podcast episodes. We're giving out life-changing advice for less than the price of your morning coffee. What a deal. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and we cannot wait to see you next week for another great episode. Cheers.